What is up guys? Welcome to the fifth video in 25 Days of Flutter. Today we're going to be taking a look at stateless versus stateful widgets. So right now I just have a basic Flutter app started. So as you can see, we have our material.dart import. We have our main function that runs the app. We have a homepage that is pointed towards this class. And as you can see, it extends a stateless widget. So a stateless widget is essentially for UI purposes. So the code in a stateless widget has no state. There's no data associated with it. So it's not going to change. So if we take a look at this, you'll notice that we are simply displaying text of hello world. So there's nothing changing in this app. There's no data being passed around. There's no user input, nothing like that. What if we wanted to add that functionality? Well, you can't do that with a stateless widget. What you need to use is a stateful widget. So we're gonna go ahead and implement this same class here, but make it a stateful widget. And that will allow us to use this button here and we're going to create a method that when you click that button, it will change this text. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out, I'm leaving it in the file because all this code is available to you guys. So if you go take a look at this, I want both of the, I want the stateless and the stateful widget to code to be available. So I'm just going to come above here. So the first step, to making a stateful widget is to declare a class, we'll give it the same name, home page, and this will extend instead of stateless, state full. And this class here is the configuration for the state. And it holds values that are used by the build method. So we don't have any values in here, but it's important to note that. Next, we need to add our override. We need to point this to another class, which will be named homepage state. So let's, de so let's declare that home page state. We'll say create state, use some arrow notation home page state, just like that. And that is all for this class here. So stateful widgets are broken up into two classes. We have our first class here, home page, and then the home page state class. So in the home page state class, that is where all of the widgets in UI will be. So let's declare this, we'll say class homepage state, and this extends this class here, homepage. So we'll say state homepage, just like that. And in here, we'll add our build widget. And a quick way to get all of this is to simply type, if you're in VS Code, s, and then you'll see we have stateful widget and stateless widget. So I can tab on that, and this will create our two classes for us. You'll see this is exactly what we created here, minus this stuff, which we are going to do that in a second. So from now on, that is how I will be creating stateful widgets. But anyways, back to the homepage state class. So as you saw above, this can take in our override and then we'll make our build widget passing in our build context and we're just going to return a scaffold widget just like that inside of here we're going to make it similar to what we commented out here so we want the at bar, we want the body, and we want the floating action bar. 
So all of this stuff, let me uncomment that, copy it, and then comment it again, and paste it right there. All right, so now we have the same stuff. So right now the functionality is the same as the stateless widget. We have this button here, and when you click it, it simply prints button pressed. And let's go ahead and look at that. If you go to Command Shift P and create a new terminal and go to the debug console, if we click the button, we can see that output coming through. So now, because we're using a stateful widget, we can replace this print statement with a method that we create. Let's go ahead and remove that. And what we want to do is on press, we want to call a method. And we'll name this method change text. All right, we need to go create this. So we're going to go to our homepage state class. And right above, right here, we are going to define our method and a variable for text. So let's do the variable first. We'll say string text is equal to, and we'll th set that to change me. Now let's go ahead and replace this hard-coded text with that variable. There we go. And we'll comment this out so we can see that change. There we go. So our text is coming through. Now let's create a method. So we can define the return type as void. We'll call this method change text. And inside of here, we want to set the state. Flutter has a built-in method for that. So if you type S E, it should pop up that set state, the first one. We'll hit tab on that. And anything we write in here, Whenever we call this method, it will change the state. So the only thing we want to do now is we want to change the value of that text string. So we can say text is equal to I am new text, just like that. End it off with our semicolon. Now, when we click the button, this text should change to this. And let's see, okay, make sure that this is a comma or you don't need anything there. And one last change, we don't want any of this notation here. We just need to put the method and leave out the parentheses because if I did this, uh, sometimes it won't give you an error there because sometimes you do, some because it is correct code sometimes. Uh, but what happens if you leave these on, it will invoke uh, the method when it builds this widget. And that will cause errors, and we don't want that. So we need to leave them out. So it only invokes this method change text on the press event. Okay, so now we should be all good to test this out. So let's go back over here to our app, and if we click this, there we go. It changes to I am new text. And again, just recapping what happened, we have our onPressed event set to this method. And because we are using a stateful widget, we are able to use this setState method to change the text and alter the state of our widget. All right, guys, so that was stateless versus stateful widgets. So in the next video, we are going to take a look at some common widgets and we are going to use them in a Flutter application and actually write code.